Back in high school, my uh, I heard that my cousin was an aerospace engineer, and uh, he works for Vault Aircraft, uh, working on the Dreamliner now. And anyway, back then I just thought that was the coolest thing, you know. I mean, working on airplanes and um, you know, there's, there's the aerospace, so maybe doing something in, as far as space goes as well. I just thought that was really cool. The Air Force has given me fantastic opportunities to pursue an academic career. Um, all in the line of getting me prepared for something they wanted me to do, uh, they allowed me to get my master's degree in astronautical engineering uh, to later be applied for Air Force projects. And then uh, this uh, degree, my PhD, is being sponsored by the Air Force Academy so that I can go back to the Air Force Academy to serve as an instructor um, in their Department of Astronautics. I think Stephen Hawking, the physicist, uh, recently said that complete extermination of the uh, human race, the, the most likely thing to cause that would be a meteor from outer space. Uh, and that's pretty incredible when you think about how much focus we've given to nuclear weapons and such. But to really put it in perspective, you can look at the time scale of past events. Um, only back in 1908, there was an observed comet impact in uh, a region of uh, Russia called Tunguska that was powerful enough to wipe out uh, an area of trees about the size of New York City. So instantly, just wiped out this, uh, you know, pushed down all these trees. So you can imagine if that happened over a city, that's not a good thing. Uh, luckily it didn't, nobody was killed in that event. That's a small scale event, about a 30 meter object. When you talk about a global scale event, you have to look back 65 million years to the uh, asteroid that impacted at the northern part of the Yucatan Peninsula in uh, Mex Mexico and created the KT boundary, uh, theoretically wiped out the dinosaurs, all that stuff. But again, the time scale is 65 million years ago. So um, eventually it will happen again, but it might be thousands, millions of years. Even if my technique or our technique uh, were used against an asteroid. Uh, science is all about standing on the shoulders of other people and uh, that's uh, what any, uh, if, if any technique was used it would be that sort of scenario where that technique was only the very end result of a lot of research that came before it so I don't take that seriously. The way that uh, the um, asteroid tether ballast system will divert an asteroid, can be thought of um, first by realizing that asteroids are on an orbit around the Sun, just like the Earth is, and that even though the solar system is very big, the Earth traveling on its orbit and the asteroid traveling on its orbit, those orbits intersecting isn't necessarily a bad thing, but if those two objects on those two big orbits are in the same place at the same time, that's a bad thing. So to kind of think of how the tether um, and ballast would, would, uh, would divert an asteroid, you can think of the asteroid as being on a racetrack, okay? A racetrack would be analogous to uh, the orbit. And it's going around on this orbit, uh, around the sun, and through some work of magic, you know that on the 45th lap around this big racetrack, you're going to hit this barrier, okay? And you have to prevent that. The tether and ballast changes the system center of mass, which you can think of as changing the lane, okay, that this asteroid is on. So if you're on a different lane on this racetrack, you can imagine it's going to take less time, right? Just like taking the inside track on a racetrack is going to give you an advantage and shorten your lap length. The exact same is true for an, uh, for an orbit. So by changing the length of time that it takes to get around a lap, Cumulatively, that adds up to enough time to miss that barrier that you had projected. And that's how you miss the Earth. Talking to my advisor, you know, we've come up with a plan to continue to look at this problem uh, over time. Um, obviously, I'm going to be going back to the Air Force, so I'm not going to have as much time to dedicate to it. The uh, key focus of this research, honestly, was um, because it was a new problem, something that hadn't really been looked at in terms at least that we could find in the literature and uh, 
so, but we will continue to look at this problem uh, collaboratively, uh, maybe on a smaller scale, and just kind of see, well, what kind of nuances can we throw in to change the model or improve the model, um, and look at it in a different way.